Okay, so let's say we have a cubic function. Let's say it's x cubed plus 4x squared plus x minus 6. There you go. Um, now what we want to do is we want to find the roots of this polynomial. And what the roots are are basically just its x-intercepts, where this function equals 0. So, or all of the x values where this function equals 0. So, if we were to like this as our cubic function equals 0, now we'll be able to find the roots of it. Um, now, a quick thing to note here is that um, all of the roots of this function are all going to be multiples of this value here, negative 6. But I guess um, something I should just explain here quick before we get into this is that um, all cubic functions either have one or three real roots. And what that means basically is, yeah, let's just try here, let's say this is our axis, right? And, and if it had one root, that would mean it crosses the x-intercept once, or sorry, it crosses the x-axis once. And that would look like this, something like that, right? Um, where this is its only root because it only crosses once. Now, if it crosses, if it has three real roots, it would look like this. It would cross once, come back down again, and go up again. We have one, two, three real roots. Now, something you might notice is what if it looks like this? Like that, and then like that. And it's only touching the x-axis at two points. Well, it's still going to have three real roots because it will, uh, this root will just be squared. It'll happen twice. For example, you might be able to represent this one over here as something like um, x minus 1, uh, x minus 2 squared. Whereas, I guess here we can do all of these. This one over here would be maybe um, x minus, or x plus 3, you know, cubed. And this one here would be something like x plus 1, um, x minus 1, and x minus 2, something like that. These, you know, these don't actually have units, but those are just examples of what uh, each of these one's graphs would look like if it has one or three roots, or if it has three roots and two of the roots happen to be the same. But anyways, back to the original problem. Um, we know that the, all of the roots are going to be a multiple of negative 6. So what we want to do is basically just start guessing to find the first one. Um, that's what I do. It seems to be pretty quick. So let's just pick an easy number. Let's try 1. So if we substitute 1 into this equation, we get 1 cubed oops, plus 4 times 1 squared plus 1 minus 6. We got minus 6. And we're going to see if this is equal to 0. So we get 1 cubed is 1 plus this is 4 plus 1 minus 6 equals 0. And yeah, this is 6 minus 6 equals 0. So that is good. And so they, what that basically tells us is that one of our roots is, is x equals to 1. And we can rewrite the, the polynomial as this x minus 1 um, times x squared plus some number times x uh, plus some other number b. Right, and so what we want to do now is we know that this is one of the roots. We know that there's two more roots. Um, and we're going to find out what a and b are so we can factor out this part of the equation. So again, this is the way that I do it, I think is really quick. So we'll just do it here. It's called synthetic division. So if you just set up a little table like this, um, and we'll fill in some values here. We Over here, we write the root that we already found. We can keep track of ourselves, one. And now what we're going to do is we're going to write the, the coefficients of the original polynomial in this row here. So the first one is one. Um, and then the next one was 4, and the next one was 1, and the last one was negative 6. And then what we do 
is we'll just bring down the one here to that. And then what we do is we multiply our root by this number and we write it here. So this is going to be 1 times 1 and we're going to put it there. And then what we do is we say a little addition symbol here so we can keep track of this. And then to fill out this value, to the space here is 4 plus 1 is equal to 5. And then again we repeat the process. We multiply this number by our root which is 5 times 1 and we write it here as 5. And again we add this value from the first row to this one and we get 6. And then we do the same thing, we repeat again. We take this number 6 times our root, which is 1, and we write it up here, which is 6. And then negative 6 plus 6 is 0. And so these numbers down here become the coefficients of the, the quadratic part of our cubic. Basically, is the coefficients of this part here. So we can write this now as, let's write it over here. So we already knew that the first part was... Uh, x minus 1, and now we know that the second part is going to be 1 times x squared, let's write it as x squared, plus 5x, that 5 came from here, and this is plus this value, this c, uh, is actually this b, would be the 6, plus 6. And now to find the other two roots, we just want to remember to keep this as equal to 0, and then just factor the second part out. So we already know we have x minus 1, and we will factor this into something equal to 0. And this is, looks pretty easy. This is just x uh, plus 2 and x plus 3. And so if we just substitute in the values that will make x, or that make this equation equal to 0, we would find that our roots will. This one actually we already know. This one of our roots was x equals to 1. Uh, this one would become x is equal to negative 2 because negative 2 plus 2 is 0 and that would make this all equal to 0 once we multiply it out and this one would become the root, this one gives rise to the root of x is equal to negative 3. So there you go, those are the three x-intercepts of this equation and basically if we wanted to graph, if we wanted to graph it um, it would just look like, well, let's see. Our, one of our x-intercepts would be at, say, 1. Uh, one would be at negative 2. And one would be at negative 3. And because this is a positive function, we know that it's going to go up from that way. Or sorry, up that way to positive infinity. And it's coming down on this side and we know that this is our other intercept so we know that uh, the function it, it does something like this and something like that but uh, we don't actually know where this vertex is and where this vertex is um, but if you come back in a few videos once we get into derivatives you'll be able to find that easily but I'll just leave that for now